Question 1. Tim bought some burgers, desserts and drinks. The ratio of the number of burgers to the number of desserts to the number of drinks is 6 is to 5 is to 4. Let me just uh, underline so that I understand what is the ordering. Burger to desserts to drinks. Alright, this way you are very clear. The 6 unit belongs to the burger. The 5 units belongs to desserts and the 4 units belongs to the drinks. Next, Tim spent a total of $381. How many burgers did he buy? So this is the ordering list. Uh, three burgers for 12, three desserts for $5, and one drink for $2.50. Given this ratio, it meant for every six burgers, there are five desserts and four drinks. This is the ordering. Let me set up the working table first. So we can use a ratio table given that this is a ratio questions. Immediately let's use a ratio table. So number of burgers. Then then we have number of desserts. Number of drinks. And then we have the total cost. Now, obviously, we can go and find what is a uh, six, five, four. Am I right? This is the ordering. So it has to be for every six burger, there are five desserts and four drinks. That is the purpose of ratio. And then we can go and calculate this cost. However, five desserts, to calculate the cost of five desserts, we will get some decimals. Why decimals? We just, you see, three desserts for five dollars. So one dessert, we're going to take this to divide by three. That will give you about one dollar and two thirds. All right. It's a weird number. Hence, as much as possible, let's not try and do a uh, fraction or decimal. Let's try and deal with whole number. Hence, instead of six, five and four, probably I can do 18, all right, I'm going to multiply it by 3, 18, 15, and 12. Can we figure out the cost of 18 burgers? Is it a nice number? Yep, we just multiply this by 6. Okay, can we figure out the cost of 15 desserts? Yep, we just times 5. Can we figure out the cost of 12 drinks? Yep. We take this to multiply it by 12. Hence, we kept the ratio. All right, we kept the ratio. So let's figure out the cost of this. So the total cost, okay, it's going to be a bit long. Um, three burgers for $12. 18 burgers, we're just going to multiply by 6. Multiply by 6. Multiply by 6. So it's 12 times 6 plus... Next for desserts, 15 desserts, so we times 5 times 5, so that will give you 5 times 5, and we're going to plus, okay, let me extend it, we're going to plus 12 drinks, so it's 12, uh, 250 times 12, and you will work that out to be? One hundred and twenty-seven dollars. Hence, one group of this will get us one hundred and twenty-seven dollars. How many groups of this do we need in order? All right, let's let the pattern continue. In order for us to arrive at three eight. One. So let's just figure out. Okay, let me minimize. So number of uh, 
sets, all right? We, we group this as one set. 381, okay, I don't need the dollar sign. So 381 divided by 127, we will get three. Three groups of this. So three groups of this, we're gonna multiply by three. So 18 times three will get you 54. 15 times three, 45. Three times 12, 36. Hence, how many burgers did he buy? All right, we've gotten the answer here, 54. So let's just write out it working. Number of burgers he bought, which is 18 times three, and you will get 54 as the answer. Next, question two. John had some coins, he lost two-fifths of them and gave one-sixth of the rest to Austin. After that, John's brother gave him another 32 coins. The ratio of the number of coins he had at first to the number of coins he had in the end was 5 is to 3. How many coins did John have in the end? For this question, we're going to draw out a model. John had some coins, so this represents all the coins that he has, all right? And he lost two fifths. We're gonna break this, break this up into five parts. One, two, three, four, five. Out of these five units, he lost two of it. So this are uh, lost. And he gave one sixth of the rest to Austin. So out of this, how do we get one six? We cut it up into six parts. So cut it, cut it. And obviously we need to cut the rest. Out of this remainder, one, two, three, four, five, six, he gave one of it away. So this uh, gave. All right, to Austin. After that, John's brother gave him another 32 coins. All right, so you're left with only five units. After that, John's brother gave him 32 coins, so he will have more. The ratio of the number of coins he had at first, so number of coins he had at first to the number of coins he had in the end was five is to three. How many coins did he have in the end? Remember, the number of coins he had at first was five. Yet, we have 10 over here. Am I right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. How can we turn five into 10? We can. Equivalent ratio. Five is to three is the same as 10 is to six. Therefore, now it makes sense. At the beginning, there are 10 units over here. After that, in the end, including the 32 coins, right, John had 6 units. But yet, let's, let's look over here. After giving everything away, alright, so he lost, he lost 4 units, he gave away 1 unit, and then you're only left with 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. After that, from 5 units, it becomes 6. Where do the extra unit come from? It must be from the 32 coins, isn't it? Only left with 5 units. The brother gave him 32 coins. After that, it becomes 6 units. Hence, we know that 1 unit is equal to 32 coins. So, how many coins did John have in the end? Well, it's a very simple step. Number of coins John had in the the end. Just 32 times 6. And that will give you 192. Next. Question 3. The area of a square over here, this is the square, 
is half of the area of a rectangle, which is this. They are then overlapped to form the figure below. So this is the overlap portion to form this, uh, this figure. The shaded area of the figure is 90 cm square, which is here. The ratio of the unshaded area of the square to the unshaded area of the, tri uh, of the rectangle is 2 is to 7. So unshaded area of the square to unshaded area of the rectangle, it is 2 is to 7. Hence, uh, let me, so this, this portion, it's two units, and then for over here, okay, let me use this, this portion, seven units, and then they have an overlap part, which is 90 cm square. What is the area of the figure? This entire thing. They want us to figure out what is the entire area. Now you think about it. Step one, area of the square. What is the area of the square? Based on this figure, we can see that the area of the square is two units plus 90 cm square, isn't it? So we have two units plus 90 cm square. And given the fact that it is half the area of the rectangle, so what is the area of the rectangle? We just need to take this, we multiply by two or twice of this. Twice of this is the area of the rectangle. So area of the rectangle. It's twice of this, isn't it? Therefore, it is four units plus 180 cm square. At the same time, they mention, all right, they mention it is also equal to seven units plus 90 cm square. Why? Area of this rectangle is 7 units plus the 90. So from these two lines, can we figure out what is 1 unit? If you need, you can draw out the model. Okay, so in, in model terms, it looks like this. So probably I can create some, some space here. Okay, let me minimize. Now, if you want to look at it, four units, four, one, two, three, okay, one, two, three, four, four units and, okay, 180, probably something like this, is equal to seven units, so we're going to have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, Okay, not, not really drawn to scale, but you get the idea. All right. The first row, it's area of the rectangle, which is this. The second row is also the area of the rectangle, which is this. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they are equal, right? Equally long. So what can we say about three units? Naturally, the next step, three units is equal to 90 cm square. Hence, one area, a uh, one unit, sorry. Oh, actually we can go straight to the answer, isn't it? The area of the figure. What is the area of the whole figure? It is nine units, nine units plus 90. Hence, area of the figure is equal to 9 units. So what is 9 units? Times 3 times 3. So it's 90 cm square times 3 plus this. 
and that is 90 times 4, isn't it? So it's 360 cm square. All right, next question. Question 4. At a carnival, a total of 833 sweets were given away. Each boy received 3 sweets, each girl received 4 sweets, and each adult received 2 sweets. One fifth of the people at the carnival were adults. The ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls is 5 is to 7. How many people were there? So let's look at the ratio, all right? We have the number of adults to, okay, maybe let me, number of adults to the number of boys to the number of Goals. We know that one fifth of them are adults. So adult, the units is one is two, four, four units. However, we have further information regarding the breakdown, isn't it? Over here, we know that the ratio is five is to seven. Therefore, five and seven is twelve. How can 4 and 12 be the same? Alright, so we're going to make them into the same number. What can we do? We can times 3 times 3 Isn't it? Alright, therefore the new ratio is 3 is to 5 is to 7 Right now there are how many units in total? 15 units in total. Okay, so for every 3 adults, there are 5 boys and 7 girls. And each group, this is considered one group, am I right? One group of this, group, uh, one group of this received how many sweets? Alright, so number of sweets received Okay, let me write it below, per group. Remember, one group has three adults, so, and each adult receives two sweets. So, three adults, two sweets each. We're going to plus, what about the boys? For every boy, it, they receive three sweets, so five times three. What about the girls? Each girl receives four sweets, so seven girls. Four sweets each. In total, you will get 49 sweets. This is for this group. Alright? How many group of this will get you to 833? Alright? Therefore, next step, number of groups. Number of groups of 3 adults, 5 boys, 7 girls. You will just need to take 8. 3, 3 divided by 49. Equal to 17 groups. Again, 1 group of this, 49 sweets. 17 groups of this will get you to 8. 3, 3. How many people were there? Remember... For each group, there are 3, 5, and 7. So 17 groups, we just need to... Okay, number of people. There were 17 groups of 3 plus 5 plus 7. So it's 17 times... 15. Answer 255. Five.